Hi, my name is Mark Owings, and I'm part of an Elevate Him ministry and a team that we love to promote, encourage, and connect people to the love and grace of Jesus. We believe that God's called us to elevate one life at a time with the love of Jesus. So I'm glad that you've joined us. I'm reshooting this video about prayer. We had some technical difficulties, but I just wanted to reshoot this so that you could have that. So last week, I talked about prayer in the face of opposition. And if you haven't had a chance to do that, you can go to elevatehim.com or YouTube channel or Facebook and go listen to that teaching. And I've been processing that all week, not just today, I've been processing that since I taught it. And so um, God, God doesn't want to just do things for us. And don't get me wrong, God enjoys doing things for, for us, but I think he really, really delights in doing things through us and with us. And I talked about last week, Proverbs 15, 8, and it says the prayer of the upright is God's delight. That's a mouthful. God delights when we pray to him. God delights when we interact with him. God loves when we pray. And we get this as parents, don't we? Uh, if you have kids and maybe you sent your kid off to camp or had an experience they were somewhere with a grandmother or grandfather and they were gone two days and you get a phone call and you answer the phone, it's your daughter, and she just said, hey, I just want to tell you I'm at camp, I'm having a good time, just wish you were here, and I love you, Mom, love you, Dad, thanks for sending us. You get off the phone, and you just go, I'll give them anything. Or, you know, I remember my son calling me from, uh, from college, and he's graduated now at home, we're getting an experience relationship in a really cool way right now, uh, more as friends, but I remember when he went away to college, and he would call me, and it was always math, and I felt so helpless in the math department. That is just not my gifting. And he would call and say, Dad, I've been studying for two days, preparing for this thing all day. Would you just pray for me? And I, it was an honor, and I felt grateful and, and a delight that my son reached out to me for, to pray for him or to connect with him. Or he'd just call and say, I was thinking about you, or my kids would be away on a, on a trip, and they'd just send us a picture and say, hey, I just thought you would love this picture. And both of our kids did that at different times and, and just loved it. God is the same way. And God doesn't like when we just send the good, beautiful pictures. God likes when we share deep things with him, our hearts, struggles, things. He knows all those things, but we get to enter in with transparency and vulnerability. We get to bring those prayer requests to him instead of him just having to look through us. That's not exciting to God. That's a robot. God never desired to have robots. God desired you to have choice and to choose and to invite him back in. And so we get that as parents, but we need to understand God looks at it in the same way. So I've been in the freedom ministry for 30 years, but really, really focused since we started doing Fully Live. And David and I, David Terry and I wrote uh, Fully um Alive. when we wrote the original Sanctuary and All In Life book together, that relationship's been just such a beautiful thing. I had lunch with him today, and, and you know, we, we spent two hours just sharing, ping-ponging from kids to world events to, to business to ministry to our marriages to just different things and laughing and playing. We didn't go to each other for an answer. And so I said that last week, prayer is not the answer. If prayer was the answer, that means anyone praying to a false god, that's the answer. Prayer can't be the answer when we pray to the moon. Prayer is the answer when we connect with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in a real relationship. He is the creator. He is the answer. Prayer is not the answer. It's the conversation and the connection. And that's what David and I experience in relationship. But... Spending all this time in freedom, I, I, I just want to read something to you. F freedom is a journey, it's not a destination. Freedom is a journey, it's not a destination. And so as I'm sharing this, I, I want you to think through maybe what would be your greatest area of need for freedom right now? I don't care if it's personally, it's finances, maritally, relational, your kids, the business, the world, comfort, insecurity, jealousy, pride, forgiveness. What I mean, there's a plethora of things. As you're thinking about that, I want to tell you, in my 20s, I really, really struggled with something. I, I, uh, it was terrible and tormenting for years and years for me to the point that I believed that I couldn't get free. 
And I'm not going to tell you what it is, not because I'm hiding it from you. It's in our books. I preach it all the time. I think your imagination will make it bigger than what it is. But the truth is, it doesn't matter what mine was. What's yours? But in mine, I'd lost all hope of being free to the point I literally prayed this to God. God, if you'll just answer this prayer for me, I'll never ask for another thing. The truth is, I think that broke God's heart. God's heart is to give us way more than we can think, hope, or imagine, according to the word. Pressed down, shaken together, pouring over for us. He doesn't want me to look at, God, just give me this one wish. See, that's, that's, prayer isn't a wish. Prayer is a connection, more importantly. It's a relationship, and prayer defines that relationship. And again, I had to learn on August 10th, 1994, God delivered me from the thing that was causing me so much torment, so much haunting from my past that I didn't believe was possible. He gave it to me. He absolutely delivered. I didn't work for it. I didn't discipline myself. I didn't become more holy. I didn't pray more. I didn't do anything. I simply was surprised by the goodness of God when he gave this to me on August 10th, 1994. But I realized then that freedom can't be a destination. It, it's a journey. And because it's a journey, because since that day, Years have gone by and I've asked God for thousands of things and he's answered them. He didn't hold back and say, nope, you used your one genie in the bottle wish. You're done, Mark. No, he didn't treat me like that. He answered that for me. And many times we look at God and we look at this process that we're going through and we're like, I literally, on August 10th, 1994, if you'd interviewed me, I would have told you I've arrived at my destination, I got free. I'll never ask for anything. I was just young. I was, I just was clueless, but I was in a lot of pain, and he showed up for me. Since then, he's brought freedom upon freedom upon freedom on me. It's never-ending. I don't know who your favorite pastor, preacher, or teacher, Joe Olstein, Joseph Prince, Joyce Meyer, whoever your authors are, T.D. Jakes, whoever it is. But mine happens, I love to listen to Jimmy Evans. He's an incredible teacher. He's an incredible preacher. But if I ask Jimmy, Jimmy, do you still go to God and need freedom in areas? To, do you get a move from glory to glory? I think Jimmy would grab both of his hands, put them on his belly, and laugh so hard, cry through tears, and say, absolutely. No matter who you think's out there that's got it all together, just because we're behind this film and preaching doesn't mean we're perfect, but we are connected to the perfect one. And what all of us have realized is God is patient and kind and gentle and long-suffering, and he desires of his nature and character is full of grace and love, and his spirit is always willing to minister to us. If that's true in freedom, then I want you to understand today that prayer is a process. We, we've got to understand we can't just simply keep going to God or I think it's the lowest denominator of prayer when we go to God all the time for just answer. I think he loves that. But I think when we move over from just the genie in the bottle and answer, to the Bible says it this way. Pour out your prayers daily. Don't cease praying. Continue praying daily. Moment by moment. It's almost like don't stop praying. Well, how do you do, how do you get in this moment of praying? How do you stay on your knees? No, it's a daily conversation. It's moment by moment. I tell God my ups, my downs. I tell him about my kids. I tell him about the frustrations with myself. And most of the time he encourages me. And when he gets quiet, I think he's drawing me in. And sometimes I want to tell you this. Prayer is a process because sometimes when we pray and are communicating to God, if we'll take time to spend in his word, he's already answered the very thing we're praying about. We don't need to pray about it. We need to get into the word. But prayer and that conversation redirects us through the spirit back to the word of God. And there's freedom. There's joy. There's peace. There's gratitude and thankfulness that come through that process. So I, I want to give you a couple of things. The reason I believe that prayer is a process Prayer is a process because God wants it to be about relationship. And he, he, it's not his desire. I don't want to give all my money and air and sense and record all the messages I think my kids will ever need and then just disappear. That wouldn't be perfect for my kids. That wouldn't be good. And it wouldn't be God. God doesn't want to 
He wants to free you totally, but in his time, his way, and his will. And this process is about relationship and being connected to him and knowing his nature and character. It's a process so that we have relationship. It's a relationship so that we'll develop patience. Prayer is not only a process that develops relationship, it's a process that develops patience in us because we have to realize that we're not in control and we, we release those things to God knowing his nature and character. He'll answer him uh, or not answer them. The old country song, some of God's greatest gifts were unanswered prayers. So I'm, I'm thankful, but God didn't answer all of my prayers uh, that I prayed. I'm glad that God knew a better way and he, I'm glad that he forced me to be patient Especially when it came to a wife, I would have got married at, at 19 and then again at 21 and at 22 and all of them would have failed. But when God told me through prayer and relationship, he said, I'm sending her. And when he sent her, she was more than I hoped, thought, or imagined in a wife. Same thing with my kids. Patience paid off in waiting in this relationship with God. Prayer is a process because it also causes us to mature. As we wait patiently, there's a maturing process. And I, I remember August 10th, 1994, I had prayed for seven years. And you think, man, that sounds like a cruel God. No, he was making me be patient on him. But he was also maturing me so that I could steward the freedom that he gave me. And many of you need to hear that today. Many times God's just waiting for the perfect intersection to deliver that thing full of grace, full of love, so that you can steward the freedom or the gift that God gave you. Sometimes people talk this about money. Money is a magnifier. If you've got a weakness, it will magnify that weakness. If you deal with something, it will, it will magnify. Money's not the only thing that'll do that. There's a lot of things that magnify that. But sometimes we ask for prosperity and God's saying, let me mature your character so that you can have money and money won't have you. And vice versa on a lot of different things. There's a maturing process. All this, this relationship, this patience, this maturing is so that we would choose to trust God. God's greatest delight is when we trust him. And though it seems dark, right now I've been praying for our nation, praying for all these things that are going on in a world that you're talking about a time that people call uh, good, evil, and evil good. We live in that time right now. I'm not fooled by it. But I want to wait, as one of my friends told me, that you're maturing enough that your um, boldness and passion uh, waits long enough for caution so that you can say it the first time the right way and with the right heart. And there are some things that I want to talk to you about in, in the days that are coming, but I'm praying and talking with God because some of the ways that I would have said things would have been wrong. They, they would have come out of passion. They would have come out of frustration. They would have come out of fear. All the things that we deal with but right now, I want you to understand this. What is your prayer request? What are ways that we can pray for you? What are you asking God for? What are you dreaming of? And one of the ways that you can, in the area of freedom, what would my life be like if this was gone? So let me put it in a sentence for you. What would it be like if I forgave this person and lived with forgiveness in my heart? Maybe God's waiting patiently for you to forgive somebody, not holding out on you, so that you can steward what he so freely wants to give to you in so many different areas. Remember, God's full of grace, full of love, full of peace, and he's wild about you and delights in you. And he delights when you come to him in prayer. And it should be a conversation. I believe we're going to be in heaven. People ask me, do you think we're going to pray in heaven? Absolutely, I do. Because I believe prayer is nothing more than communication to God. And I think we're going to communicate a lot with Father. I hope to be in his lap a lot. And I'll share that lap with you. And he'll share his lap with all of us. And there'll be so much for him to go around for us. But I think... Heaven will be a perfect place and it won't be about the answer, but I think it will be so full of delight that the Bible says no eyes seen, no ears heard what God is preparing for those who love him. I love him because he first loved me. And today, I hope you're encouraged. I hope that you'll connect with us. If you want to connect with us, connect with us at elevatehim.com. God bless you.